Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to another edition of AutoLine Daily, where we strive to provide the best insight into this otherwise inscrutable automotive industry. Coming up later in the show, we'll have the premiere of Jim Hall's design handbook. But now let's get to the news. Tesla Motors announced it paid off its government loan yesterday with interest. Last week, the company raised more than a billion dollars in the stock market, and it used 452 million of those dollars to repay the feds. However, Tesla ticked off Chrysler because in its press release, it claimed to be the first American car company to repay the government. Chrysler quickly blogged back reminding Tesla it paid off its loan nearly two years ago. Tesla does have some wiggle room. It can claim to be the first electric car company to repay its loan. Back in late April, we got the lowdown on all the technical bits going into the Spark EV when GM bragged it has the best electric vehicle efficiency available for retail. And now we know the price, only $27,495, making it the cheapest EV available. There's also a $199 a month low mileage lease, which is the same as the Nissan Leaf and Fiat 500e. The Spark goes on sale next month in California and Oregon. Relay Rides, that car sharing program where you can rent out your car to other users, was shut down by the state of New York. Relay Rides offers a million dollar insurance policy to anyone who enlists their car with the service and a $300,000 policy for anyone who rents it. But the state of New York has not approved that insurance, so Relay Rides is dropping out of New York. Remember, Relay Rides teamed up with OnStar and claims that individuals can earn up to $1,000 a month renting their car out to other people. A new study highlights how car dealers need to do a better job on the internet. Digital airstrikes, spring of 2013, automotive social media and reputation trend study shows that car buyers find online reviews more helpful than a dealer's site. And it says consumers trust social media the most when deciding which dealer to buy from. It suggests dealers should ask customers to post a recommendation if they had a good experience advertise on Facebook, and also give discounts if a customer likes them on Facebook. Since 1928, Ford has been making cars in Australia, but that's not going to last much longer. Ford Australia, which will cease manufacturing in 2016, faces costs double those in Europe and four times those of its Asian divisions. Automakers were doomed in the country after it opened its once closed market to imports. After that, there was just not enough sales volume to support local manufacturing. Remember, the population of Australia is only something like that of Michigan and Ohio combined. Automakers are redesigning their cars far more frequently than they did 30 years ago. A report out of Britain by Cap Automotive notes that in the 1970s and even into the 1980s, car designs were often left pretty much the same for up to 10 years. Now, automakers don't dare let them go three to four years without a significant refreshing. Two reasons for the quicker pace of change, fuel economy regulations, which are forcing more frequent technical updates, and computer-aided design, which makes those changes much easier to do. Speaking of design, what does car design have to do with 17th century warships? Find out next in the premiere of Design Handbook, hosted by Jim Hall. Proven on the track and on roads around the world, Borg Warner turbochargers improve fuel economy and reduce emissions without sacrificing performance. Borg Warner, official turbocharger supplier to the IZOD IndyCar Series. Today we're introducing a new segment called Design Handbook. It's hosted by that encyclopedic automotive expert, Jim Hall. In each edition of Design Handbook, 
Jim will explore a new automotive design topic with insight into why cars look and function the way they do. For today's installment, please turn to the design terms section of your handbook. Here's Jim. If you follow the auto industry, especially the design side of it, you've probably heard the term tumble home. Tumble home refers to the inward slant of a greenhouse towards the center line of the car. The term's origins are rooted in naval architecture when the side of a warship would angle inward above the ship's beam. The idea back then was to make boarding more difficult in battle by insetting the deck. It was farther away from a challenging vessel. In cars, this came about to increase the perception of interior space. And by pushing the body away slightly from the shoulders, the side window sort of kinked back in and took in an inward slope. Over the years, as vehicle widths increased, tumble home became more and more pronounced. As the angle becomes more severe, packaging a roll down window gets really difficult though. One production car that quite possibly had the most severe tumble home angle of all time was the Lamborghini Countach. The upper had so much inward rake, only a small toll passage could be articulated in the side window. Pain in the butt to live with, but it looked so good. Near the end of the last century, a couple of manufacturers tried to reverse the inward trend for this movement of the roof. When Toyota introduced the XX20, that was a second generation Avalon, the pillars were moved closer to vertical in an effort to add more EPA rated interior volume. With a weird instrument panel that was sort of buried away from eye line, most customers didn't notice the reduced tumble home, they just couldn't see the gauges. Not surprisingly, the third generation Avalon received a more conventional upper. In 1998, Fiat decided to get into the European people mover market with something they called the Multipla. And never have weird and wonderful been woven together in such a distinctive tapestry. Rather than three rows of two seats, like everybody else used in their minivans for Europe, the Multipla sat three across in the front row and three across in the second row. To accommodate this, the little van eschewed tumble home altogether, and the result was a vehicle that looked as much like an Italian stovetop espresso maker as a car when you viewed it from behind. It was really charming. But now with side impact regulatory requirements becoming stricter and with an increased emphasis on fuel economy, cars are gonna be growing wider below the belt line and you're probably gonna see roof shrinking slightly. This is gonna be done to manage the frontal area on the car, and all of this comes together to mean that tumble home in future cars is gonna be a lot more pronounced. And that means more wet and snowy seats every time you open the door in inclement weather. For Auto Line Design Handbook, I'm Jim Hall. That Jim Hall. Stay tuned to Auto Line Daily for additional lessons from the Design Handbook. But before you go tumbling home, make sure to synchronize your watches for tonight's live webcast of Auto Line After Hours, where we will have Mike Segrist, the chief engineer for the Chevy Cruze Diesel. If you've got any questions about the cruise diesel, tonight's the night to ask them. So join me and the auto extremist Peter DeLorenzo for some of the best insider information in the business. But that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.